Hi guys, well this week we're going to be taking a look at the ASRock Z170 Extreme 4. So as tradition would have it, you know, each year and each generation of ASRock Intel uh, boards, we've always looked at the Extreme 4. Uh, but this time around with the Z170 chipset, it's taken us a while to actually source this board from ASRock. Uh, but just after the Intel launch, we actually looked at and, and reviewed the Fatality K4 which while offering good features, we had major problems that, you know, trying to achieve any type of overclock. Uh, so we're hoping to avoid any such issues today with the Extreme 4. Uh, so in ASRock's lineup, the Extreme 4 kind of uh, is a, a lower tier offering. It retains strong features and offers good value for money. ASRock has chosen to revisit the styling we saw with the Z87 boards. And so Extreme 4 features clean, tidy, and relatively minimalistic styling. Around the board, there are basic features which should accommodate most users. Okay, so onto the topic of pricing for the Extreme 4. Well, it's £110 in the UK, $135 if you are over in the US. So yes, this is quite an affordable board to pick up. And certainly if you're wanting to you know, kind of jump over to Z170, then it could be a good option for you to go for. Now, alongside this uh, video, we're also going to be publishing a full set of benchmarks and reporting back on that overclocking too. So enjoy. Right guys, well let's start with an unboxing of our Extreme 4. So here you can see we've got the packaging, we've got the uh, standards listed along the top there, and of course, Super Alloy is at that trademark which kind of covers all of the component selection. If we just uh, flip the box over, we've of course got those features which are kind of integral uh, to this very board itself. Uh, we've got them all listed there, we've got the technical specification. We're not going to go into these uh, and talk about them now because you know when we go into the video, when we're looking at the board itself, we're going to cover every single feature. Okay, and inside the box we've got a selection of included items. We have got uh, four SATA 36G cables. We've got that SLI bridge there which is fixed. Got a software CD which has all your drivers and we've got a case badge there too. Got that rear I.O. shield. A single screw there for the M.2. And then we've got the documentation. Now uh, the first of those is the uh, installation guide and that kind of details all of your features, all of your components on there so that is quite helpful. And then the second one is a software setup guide so that is specifically for the BIOS itself. And then obviously Inside there, we've got an anti-static bag and your board is inside that. Okay, so here is the Extreme 4. So this board is more in keeping with the Extreme 4 under the Z87 chipset. If you remember, ASRock adopted a uh, blue design with the last generation of Z97. Uh, so what we have here is a super sleek arrangement. You know, the board is very appealing to the eye, kind of takes on an understated aesthetic. Uh, the PCB is matte black. We have black heat sinks, lanes and ports and those notorious gold capacitors dotted around the board. So for those wanting to kind of keep things toned down, then from a styling point of view, this is a great choice. And for those of you wanting to know, this board conforms to the ATX form factor, so it will fit inside most mid towers. Okay, so we're now gonna move in for a closer look at the different areas of this board. So let's start at the CPU socket. Obviously being an LGA 1151 board, we have the support there for the Intel 6th generation of CPUs, which are of course codenamed Skylake. So you can use a 6600K, 6700K, or even a non-K chip from that family. Now Extreme 4 uses digital power delivery, and it comes with a 10-phase power design. And up at the top edge there, we've got an 8-pin CPU power connector. So covering the VRMs, we have a dual heatsink design, but those are not joined together with a heat pipe, as we commonly see with other designs. And then throughout the board there, ASRock are using uh, standard chokes, so nothing special there. However, we do have those Nichicon 12K Platinum caps, so you get a uh, longer life with those. And uh, with the combo caps, the larger ones there, uh, this should help you with better efficiency when you do overclock. And we will, of course, be reporting back in the article for this board uh, on the overclocking performance, so be sure to check that out. And the other thing to mention is that uh, we've got dual fan headers immediately next to the heatsink, and those should assist with uh, you know, coolers which feature more than one cooling fan. Moving on to the memory region, we of course have allocation for dual channel DDR4, and we have support for up to 64 gig, up to 3866 MHz, and as you'd expect, XMP 2.0 is fully compatible. So with this board being in the lower tier, it kind of lacks any additional features around the memory, as you typically get, but we do have a USB 3 header right next to that 24-pin power. 
And as we move along there, we see the storage. So this consists of two rows of SATA Express. And of course, uh, if you are using a standard SATA based drive, you can use four of those ports as they are SATA 3 6G. Now Extreme 4 uses two BIOS and those two EPROMs can be swapped out if for whatever reason you manage to balk the BIOS. Uh, so that is quite a handy thing to have. And then next to those uh, we have the dual BIOS switch so that you can move between them both. In this bottom corner here we have another row of upwards facing SATA Express ports and that handy LED debug which displays digits throughout the post process and that can help you to identify any problems that you might have. We also have those power and reset buttons which you know are really useful if you do have the board on a test bench as it means you don't have to connect up the chassis cables. And then behind all of those we of course have that huge matte black heatsink which covers the Z170 chip. Okay, onto the technicalities of the PCI Express. So in this area here we have three PCI Express 3.0 X16s and three PCI Express 3.0 X1s. And those X1s there are open so they support a larger number of devices. So the modes for the X16s are the top one there gives you a full 16, the middle gives you eight, and then the bottom one there gives you four. So if you're planning to use just one card, then that top one is the best one to use. But uh, NVIDIA SLI and AMD Crossfire there is fully supported for multi-GPU configurations. Now just below that top X16 there, we have a single M.2 slot on the Xtreme 4. Uh, the only slight disappointment though is that if you do populate that X16 with a graphics card, then as you can see, it is unlikely that an M.2 drive there will be able to benefit from the airflow inside the chassis, which is fairly important really for such a storage device. Anyway, that uh, M.2 there is PCI Express Gen 3 X4 and it is capable of up to 32 gig a second. And since we have just a single slot, if you did want to RAID, then you're going to need to find yourself a PCI adapter. So immediately next to the PCI Express, we of course have the audio components, which are centered around ASRock's Purity Sound 3. So with that, you're getting an isolated area there for the audio components. You can see there the tracer line, uh, the popular ALC 1150 audio codec, Nichicon Gold Audio Capacitors 115 SNR DAC, and the NE5532 headphone amp. And so that translates to pretty good audio package, to be honest. Uh, ASRock have come a long way over the years, and their audio is actually among the best that you can get for onboard. Okay, and lastly, we arrive at the rear I.O. section of Extreme 4, and there's quite a bit of connectivity here. So from left to right, we have a PS2 keyboard mouse combo port with two USB 3 ports, a clear CMOS switch, DVI, HDMI, and display port for the video out, two USB 3 ports, a gigabit LAN port there that is running the Intel i219, another two USB 3 ports, a USB 3.1 type A and type C port, and then lastly that audio panel there with seven channels and optical SPDIF out. Okay, so that concludes our look at the ASRock Z170 Extreme 4. So this board covers all of the basics that you're going to need to kind of make a move over to the Intel Z170 chipset. You know, it has quite a nice balance really of uh, the features that you can use. Obviously with that price tag, there are a few cutbacks here and there. But uh, you know, for most people that are just wanting to transition over to this new platform, then there really should be more than sufficient there. Uh, that price tag is probably one of the biggest highlights with this board, you know, because for anyone that is wanting to move over to Z170, you're going to need a new chip, you're going to need new memory, and uh, you know, keeping that price down as low as possible is going to be high up there on the list of priorities. So guys, we obviously can't cover the benchmarks for this board in this video, but if you jump over to the full review, links are going to be on the screen and in the description very soon. Uh, over there, we've got the full list of comparative benchmarks. Uh, we'll also be demonstrating how far this board can take our Skylake chip in terms of the overclocking. So I really hope you enjoyed today's video, guys. If you did, then please hit that like button. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, then I suggest you do so, so you don't miss any of our future videos. Take care of yourself, and I'll see you guys next Friday.